Uh, willkommen zu meiner Prä uh, Präsentation über uh, Kommunikation uh, uh, die Dinge. Uh, I will do it in English because that's much better. My name is Peter Martin. I'm from Nijmegen, the Netherlands. And I uh, have my own company, DB8. Um, I also recently created a free checklist called DB8 uh, Site Dev. Is it visible here? It's a bit difficult, I think. Should I taste, change the contrast of this, this red uh, stuff? DB8 Site Dev. Yeah. OK. okay. Um, I'm a Joomla volunteer. And besides that, I organize a Linux user group, because I love Linux. And I love coffee, but uh, this open coffee Nijmegen is for self-employed people. Um, you can reach me at uh, Twitter or using my website, db8.nl. In this presentation, I will tell something about Internet of Things. I will tell something about two of the small projects I did, about MQTT itself, and, well, everything you see on the screen. So, Internet of Things. Has anyone an idea what Internet of Things means? Yes? Um, Internet of Things, uh, first of all, Internet of People is what we are doing when we are sitting behind a computer looking at an Internet website. We are part of the Internet of People. We connect to a machine. But Internet of Things is when machines can connect to each other. And this is uh, a definition an official definition by uh, International Telecommunication Union, which is really difficult, so I skip it. I looked at Wikipedia. It's not really that good. This is also very difficult. But the best definition I found was on Twitter, after I posted it myself. Um, Internet of Things is uh, a network of devices uh, that are connected to each other using TCP IP and communicate autonomously. Uh, TCP IP means Internet, so they use Internet as a layer. And when I'm talking about autonomously, we have to be careful with autonomously. Uh, if you know Skynet, then you know what I'm talking about. So um, the communication with devices. When you talk about Internet of Things devices, you can maybe have input to the devices, text messages, or sensors like the temperature, or you have also uh, output like test messages again, and of course signals like LEDs that bleep or maybe a sound. But when you think about uh, the stuff that is associated with Internet of Things, people tell about drones, but also about refrigerators. This refrigerator, um, something like this, uh, was announced two weeks ago or so in Berlin with a technology uh, uh, fair. It's really expensive. At the same fair, a British company introduced this one, which is a camera in your refrigerator. So uh, you can look in the supermarket on your mobile phone. So you connect your mobile phone to the refrigerator. Um, I don't like this kind of stuff. I don't like self-ordering stuff or people looking in my refrigerator. But if I talk about Internet of Things myself, I see uh, another killer app. And this killer app is uh, not the Arduino. People use Arduino over here? No. Okay, people, uh, who, know, who doesn't know Arduino? Sorry? Everybody knows what Arduino is? No. Um, okay, very short. Uh, it's a microcontroller. So you program in a language like C, and when it's ready, you push, and it will compile it into a machine language, and will be pushed to this machine on a chip. You can take it out of your uh, computer and put other devices to it. And when you put power on it, it just runs the program you created. And people use it in uh, Domotica. And also uh, people use it uh, in uh, art. Like there are a lot of people who do, are doing art. In the past they were using uh, solar irons and making equipment with all this kind of stuff really took a lot of time and with this it's really much more easier to do but this machine has power and it has usb that's it so the only thing you uh, can do is communicate with the computer directly using usb or you buy a sort of shield which you put on it for ethernet so you can connect it to the network 
two and a half years ago, a Chinese company released this chip, uh, ESP8266. It's a Wi-Fi chip. I have it with me. This is it, really small. And this Wi-Fi chip had Chinese documentation with it. Nobody knows, knew what to do with it. Uh, a couple of people uh, were able to translate it into English, and then the hacker community uh, got loose. They looked at it, they hacked it, and they knew you could use it to connect it to uh, Arduino, and you could use all style uh, Haze command, 80 com uh, modems uh, used it in the past, but it's not really uh, these days anymore. But someone else found out the chip on it, you can flash it yourself just like you can flash the Arduino. So you don't need the Arduino anymore. With really small projects, you just flash this chip. And I will do a demo at the end. So you can add Wi-Fi to the Arduino. Uh, the ESP8266, it's, uh, has a, it's uh, only $5, it's a Wi-Fi chip. It uses TCP IP. And you can program it using uh, a software development kit, uh, Lua scripts, if you put Node MCU on it, but also the Arduino, if you install the ESP uh, library for it. So uh, this is an old picture of all the sorts that are available. Uh, I think uh, currently you have also ESP12, which is newer, uh, has more possibilities, because this is really tiny, also with memory. And this is what it looks like, if you look at it. Um, for communication, you have transmission and receive channels. Uh, you have to power it using a 3.3 volt, which is, can be a bit difficult because most equipment uses 5 volt or 12. Um, and you only have two GPIO ports, so you can just uh, do two things with it. I mean, uh, yeah, you can, you can trigger two things. To program it, you have to connect it to um, a USB to serial device like what you can see over here. You have to connect it in a, in a certain way and then you can flash the chip in it. So, what I did with I IoT, uh, first of all, uh, this is a, a prototype board and uh, on this board you can solder stuff, but it's permanent. And if you want to experiment with, with stuff, you can use a breadboard. Uh, on a breadboard, you just put some uh, voltage on uh, those rails. Uh, these are connected, all the um, vertical ones. So if you have a chip and you uh, want to uh, program this chip or use this chip, you just put it over the gutter. So you can use uh, all the chips with all kinds of devices. This of course is not, it's, it's Joomla logo a bit. It's not useful any. Um, I had a problem with uh, the ESP chip. And it was the gutter. This gutter is too, too big for this uh, uh, thing. So what I did, this is how you uh, build stuff with um, a bread box, a uh, breadboard. And here you can see the gutter again. This is uh, an IC socket. And here you can see the pins. That you can't just use an IC socket. So what I did, I built a bridge, really tiny again, and with this bridge I can just put it on the breadboard and you can just use it. So now I can do stuff with this on a breadboard. So when I uh, finished something which was working, I transferred it to uh, a PCB. I cut, it, cut uh, off a piece, I uh, took an IC, which I, uh, uh, a socket which I just cut and just switched around, and then I was able to put uh, this, machine, this uh, ESP chip on uh, this device. And this is a transistor, and this is me flashing the whole project. So, what's the first thing, if you want to do something yourself at IoT, what's the first thing you would do yourself? Okay. Site control. Okay, uh, okay, that's for me, it would be maybe second or third. 
the first thing I uh, was temperature sensor, especially here because yesterday it was really hot. <laughs> and what I did, I uh, created a temperature um, sensor using Node MCU and Lua script. And I used a web service somewhere on the internet that is called thinkspeak.com. <coughs> you can create an account over there and you connect your devices to it. And in my case, I connected the, this Wi-Fi chip with the temperature to, the temp uh, to this website so I could look at the temperature. Another thing I did um, is called the sandwich, this story. This is my, uh, there was my co-working place, I just quit over there, but it used to be my co-working place. And one day, it was Wednesday, and I was working over there, and my colleague Remco, he entered the room, and he was happy because he brought, he bought some lunch for himself, and I didn't have lunch. Of course, I could have uh, go out of the building, uh, went to, to go to this place to buy lunch myself, but we are both in IT, and we are thinking about how can we solve this with IT, this problem. And people who know me know uh, I like Raspberry Pi. So I was thinking, what's the first thing you do when you are at work? What's the first thing you do at work? Coffee. Okay, besides your jacket, <laughs> lights and coffee, what's the fourth thing you do? Turn on computer. Yes, and then? Switch on. Yes. Log in, switch on. So you connect your device or maybe your mobile phone to the local area network. So what I did was I had the Raspberry Pi. I connected the Raspberry Pi also to the same network. And I wrote a small bash script. And the script collects all the MAC addresses of the devices. Those MAC addresses are sent to an external service, web service, which I created with Slim, <coughs> Slim Framework. Slim Framework is an external web service that you could use. And it's excellent because it uses REST and you can connect it to your Joomla database. Pierre-André Fulio, uh, um, he did a presentation at JN Beyond a couple of years ago, and he has a GitHub. Uh, I will do, I put this presentation online, and you can click all the links. So you will end up at his uh, GitHub repo, so you can use this yourself. So I connected to it to my Joomla website, and in my Joomla website I created my own extension called com members and with com members I can uh, manage all the people working over there including their uh, MAC addresses and so I, I can go to the website I can see who's who's there because every five <coughs> minutes uh, the MAC addresses are retrieved uh, the old one are deleted I don't want to follow them I just want to know who's there at this moment so, but it was a bit difficult because I had to use uh, my laptop or my other computer. And some other person on my uh, co-working uh, place, he was an app builder. So he built an app for the Android, which just listed all the people. And uh, when someone was there, it would uh, brighten up so you could see who's there. So this is what I did with IoT. And it's nice, but it's all one-to-one -one communication. And all uses it all uses REST, and I want I wanted to do something else. Person to device, okay, that's nice. Device to device is also nice. It's what I did, but what I want is to have devices to devices. So I looked in uh, to some message protocols, and you probably have heard of Zigbee. It's uh, Philips Huey with uh, the lights. They are using the Zigbee, and it's really nice. It's a mesh network, but it's propriety, and I like open source. Mm -hmm. So I was looking to other protocols, and what I found most promising is MQTT. So I will tell you something about MQTT. MQTT is uh, not message queue, but it's MQ because uh, it's made by uh, IBM, and they had some sort of line of products called MQ and this was a protocol but it's called MQ telemet telemetry transport it's really light uses TCP IP it's also uh, an industry standard and it uses a publish and subscribe pattern publishing subscribe means you need one server which is called MQTT broker 
And this MQTT broker, you can publish to topics. You can subscribe to topics and publish to topics. So when you are connected to an MQTT broker, you have to subscribe to a topic which is hier hierarchically structured with forward slashes. So some examples. I have a house with a ground floor and a first floor in my dreams. But let's assume I have one with a kitchen, living room, etc. These are four different topics that you can subscribe to. And if one device sends information to one of those topics, all devices that are connected to the same channel will receive the information. You also can use wildcards. For instance, if I would like to know the temperature, I can use, in, in, all, in a, lot, a lot of rooms, I just use a plus. And the kitchen and living room, they, um, uh, when I use this wildcard, uh, they are triggered. And when I use the slash, the hashtag, uh, it means everything behind it. And this one is, this one is um, sensitive, like how deep it is. So, how would information, how would MQTT communicate with each other? Um, you have the client and the broker. The client will connect to a broker, it will subscribe to certain channels, and then it can publish stuff and also unsubscribe. And a broker, when you connect to a broker, you will send a connect, or it will send back a connect, meaning connect, acknowledge. The same as subscribe, subscribe, acknowledge. And with publish, only uh, if the quality of service is one or two. And that's this, quality of service. There are three different levels, and it's like I say something, and if I say, you see, now nobody enough, I don't get anything feedback, so I don't know if you hear me. So, zero, quality of zero. Zero means you just send and don't listen with the temperature device, you would use this. And I mean, if it's not critical. Um, you also have that you, uh, you would <coughs> acknowledge the receipt. So, you send information with quality of service one. And then you need to get back something, because if you don't get back the public acknowledge, publish acknowledge, you just send it again and again and again until you get uh, the acknowledge back. And then the last, last one is just once. Maybe you want to set uh, to uh, pull a switch, but you only want to do it once and not two or three or four times. Otherwise, you don't know if it's on or off. Or off. Okay, and. One of the problems with wireless communication is security. And security, you have to look at three different kinds of security. First of all, you have authentication, which means which devices have access to the broker. Uh, you can use username, password, or a, um, a public-private key. And when people of, or devices have access to your broker, you have to have access levels. So sometimes you can maybe only some uh, uh, topics available for some people. And besides access and authorization, you also have secure communication. And for this case, you can use um, TLS, like HTTPS, it also uses TLS. Um, last topic before I go to the demo is installation. Um, first of all, you can use a software as a service. If you use a software, that software as a service, you just subscribe to a channel and you can use it as a sort of uh, broker and you send the information to it, but it's more for testing purposes. But if you want to start with, uh, with this, it's nice to play with. You can also use uh, uh, a server like uh, a Linux server I don't know how to do it on Windows or Apple, but I think that Mosquito, this, uh, this program is also available on Windows and Macintosh. But you install it, and I also installed a client, so I was able to, to do stuff. But I think this is too technical, so I, will, uh, I won't do it here. Of course, you have uh, the ESP8266, and if you want to um, use this with MQTT, you first need an IDE, the Arduino IDE. You have to install 
the ESP library for the Arduino. Um, if you are in Arduino, uh, you have to go to Tools Boards and then uh, you have to select the board you want to program. And in the code you are programming, you need to include an MQTT library and also, in my case, the ESP8266. Um, there is one problem. When you program this chip, this chip will go to the router. But a router has a username password. So you have to hard code the username password and the router name in this chip. So I did it at home. I took it with me. And if I would connect it here, it doesn't work because it doesn't know what my Wi-Fi. So what I did was I took my own router with me. It's Onion Pie. <coughs> I installed MQTT on it. And I will connect it because I need it in a couple of minutes. And it takes maybe 30 seconds to boot. I'll do it like here so you can see the flash. It's always nice to see it's working. And, oh yeah, something else. Um, when you are working on your computer, you can install an MQTT client, which is Java based. And when you install it, you have a sort of console and you can just see all the channels, you can see all the traffic, etc. And I will show it in a minute. What I did before I started this session, I asked a couple of people to uh, install an MQTT client on their mobile phone and they will participate in MQTT communication in a minute. Uh, finally, if you want to do something uh, with Python, uh, there's also a Python module. Uh, if you want to do something with PHP, you can use an MQTT library for PHP. And I will show you that in a minute. So, demo time. Um, what I will do, I have to uh, switch my screen so you can look what I'm doing on my screen. Okay. If everything is okay, you would see. Oh. Yes. So, first of all, I have this uh, MQTT client, which is called MQTTFX. It's platform independent, so Windows and uh, Macintosh will have it as well. But it's Java, so it takes some time to start up. Okay, there you go. Um, I go to broker status. I'm not connected to any broker yet. Uh, is the light still blinking or is it on? No, it's on. Okay, so what I do now, I will connect to another network, which is called Skynet. I'll disconnect first. Skynet. And when it's connected to Skynet, I am looking here for the connection. Yes. I can connect to the broker. And then I can subscribe to the broker. And I can see there are three <coughs> clients connected. Are all two people here are already connected? Yes, great. Yes, great. Okay, um, the first thing, I will subscribe to something called test. This is a test channel. And the first thing I will do to the pub, to the test channel, I will say this message is for my laptop. And if I go to the subscribe, I can see this message. This is for my laptop. And I ask some people uh, to participate in this experiment because they can send information to the test channel as well. Um, I will do it on my phone, but um, you have to connect to uh, the Wi-Fi uh, first, 
and then you can just uh, send information. So people who want to send a message, please add your name to it so I, we can see that it's working. And I know it's the first time for you all. Um, you have to subscribe. I mean, you have to uh, publish to the channel called test because that's what you can see over here. But if you subscribe to test, you will receive all the messages everybody else will send. So we don't need WhatsApp anymore, I think. So I just sent a message to the uh, to my own channel, test for my own mobile. Uh, yeah, I can see it. You can see it. Okay, so you're connected. Great. So um, to publish information, you uh, have to go to publish. Uh, the topic is test, and then you can send something to the test channel. But of course, this is only an example. Don't use it at home because uh, you better use room something. And I will do that too, because I'm going to subscribe to something called Room Temp. And Room Hum. So I have now three channels, and people are still really busy trying to log in. Oh, yes, I can look at the broker status. I can see there are six clients connected. This is one. This is two, uh, three, four, five, Robert is six, and you are also, well maybe you will be there in a minute. Well, I think I will continue with um, the rest of the presentation, of the demo. Ah, test from Renee. Yeah. Ah, great. Cheers. Now it's working. Yes. Um, topic test. Yeah. Message. I don't know if I can send the message. You can do it in German as well. Or in PHP. Disconnected. Oh, yes. We have now five clients. Anyway. Um, I will just show the next thing. So I have this small device. And this device, well, I, I told you it is only 3.3 volt. And I have a battery pack. And the batteries, there are three batteries of 1.5 volt. So together it's 4.5 volt. And the chip doesn't like 4.5 volt. So I have a small uh, converter board first to convert the 4.5 to 3.3. Um, I have, uh, yeah, that's it. <coughs> so you can see the red line is on, which means power, and it will start flashing blue bleeps. When it's online, it will communicate. So if somebody wants to send something to test, it's okay. In this case, I, um, I flashed some, some small program, a testing program on it. And you just uh, uh, make the photo of uh, an historic event. Because this is the first spam IoT device. <laughs> it sends only spam messages. And at the moment it just did some rubbish.
but it should send sp spam messages. This is I don't see it any moment, but ah, boost your email, click through. Okay, this is the first spam message <laughs> it sends. So this is no use at all. Uh, even this is not really. Yeah, this is sort of Internet of Things because it communicates. A device communicates with uh, the broker. So I made something else as well. It's this. It looks more interesting because it's bigger with something else. And this is a temperature device and a humidity um, device. So what temperature would it, is it here today, you think? 20? I think 23. Okay, yesterday it was, was much warmer. In this case, let's connect it. In this case, I uh, did not program it to autonomously send the information every five minutes or so, but I have to ask to it. So, ah, Mike, cheers. <laughs> so, I have uh, two new channels. I mean, two, uh, there's a welcome message when I connected it. It said, okay, I'm a temperature device, and also I am a humidity sensor. And to use this device, I go to my uh, test, uh, and here I say temp. I, I program uh, this device to listen to the word temp. Mm -hmm. So if someone here sends temp to some other channel, it, it might pop up as well. But So let's do temp, and we see it's four, uh, 24 degrees. Okay, we are wrong. Um, and so also the humidity. I just sent a message to the test channel and this one received test. I mean the hum uh, message. And it will publish the hum if it's okay. Okay. Um, <coughs> we drank a lot of beer yesterday. <coughs> Could you blow like to it? Okay. So it, it used to be uh, 57. And if I do a hum again, it should be higher now because... Yes, oh, I have to go to this hum. No, let's do it again. And I do a test. Have to scroll it down or? Ah, it, it used to be some. Oh, yes. Yeah. It used to be uh, like this and it's somewhat higher, but it should be uh, like 100%. I will uh, spit on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Almost 100%. Okay, I did it. So. These devices you can use in your domotica, like uh, maybe uh, doing something with the temperature and the humidity of the room. But um, actually, we are on a Joomla conference. Did I mention Joomla? Okay, at the beginning, uh, I'm a Joomla volunteer. That's the only thing I said about Joomla. So I did something else as well. Let's disconnect it. I have... Uh, The chip again. I have a small programmer, and this is a, a small board. I stick the ESP on this board. I told you I have a breadboard, a small breadboard with me, and I will connect it. Okay, then I have some devices like LEDs. And I have some wires. And I have to be very careful to use the 3.3, not the 4.5, it's also on this board.
Okay, so now I just created an electronic device with two LEDs and I will flash it using the USB cable and I will show you the program I will flash on it. So it's connected. I will go to um, my Arduino IDE. Oh, hello, Jane Beyond 2, 3. Oh, I programmed something else on the device and it starts running now. <laughs> so, this is Arduino IDE and it uses C. So, um, first I include the pub sub client, which is the MQTT library for Arduino. And then I include the ESP8266 Wi-Fi. And if you um, are, want to use this yourself, you have to install uh, a board library. So with Boards Manager, you can install all the boards because the Arduino boards are already in Arduino IDE. And if you want to use ESP, you have to install them with the Boards Manager. There are a lot of different ones and I use the generic one. So it's okay. You have to be careful to uh, use the, the, the right device, otherwise it won't work. In this case, I have hard-coded Skynet without a password, so I can connect it to that network. And the server is uh, uh, hard-coded like 1916831. And this is what it will do. I have some LED LEDs on it, and I will just switch it on, switch it off. So, there are two options. When you have something, you have to verify it first. It will compile it and verify it. And when it's ready, you can um, send it to the device. No. Yes, done compiling, okay. Now I will... Um, compile it and upload it. And when I upload it, I have to uh, push a button on uh, this small uh, board because I have to reset it when I upload something. So it's like this. Okay. Um, now it's uploading. Um, the light is going on, I don't know why, but you can see that it's uploading. Uh, now it's ready. Oh, no, not yet. Now it's ready. I will disconnect it. Because otherwise you think uh, it's just my PC doing stuff. And I will connect. Oh. I connect the device to uh, a small power supply. Okay, um, I might have done something, yes, okay. So, the first thing I do is I go to my MQTT client and I would uh, like to ask the people who participate in a demo, in a demo not to send, do the same stuff as me, because otherwise uh, this experiment will go wrong. So, if I go to publish, I have the test channel, I have green on, yes, I have green off, Yes, I have a, a red on, which does not work for some reason. Ah, I've switched it on in the wrong way. So I also have red off, and I also have green blink. It works. So I can send messages to the broker and the broker will send messages to all the people connected to the same device 
even this device and this device has some program on it responding to the, the channels like green blink etc. What does it have to do with Joomla? Nothing. But I wrote a small plugin for Joomla. So I can open my uh, Joomla website. <coughs> and in my Joomla website I have two I have to log in I think. Yeah. I have two plugins and one is a user plugin. And if I open the user plugin, I uh, had some settings like MQTT broker. Um, I also say uh, I want to use the channel test and red on will be the command when it, this is triggered. And the question is, where should I trigger it? Well, in my case, I don't like hackers. I don't like people who try to log in into my website using uh, the wrong username and password. So let's assume we have a hacker with username and password. He tries to log in, then my LED will warn me that someone is hacking my website. Well, it's not really hacking, of course. <laughs> so this is really nice that you can have a device listening to your website, in my case Joomla, using a plugin. Um, but you are not waiting for hackers, you're waiting for visitors, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I wrote another plugin as well. First, let's switch off. Uh, this alarm. It's off now. The other plugin is called uh, Article Read. In this case, I did the same like uh, using a broker, a port, and a client. In this case, I use green blink. So when the devices on the network hear green blink, this device will respond with a green blink. So I go to the front of the website, I go to login, nothing should happen, nothing happens. If I go to contact us, nothing should happen, it's not interesting. But I like the news. But this is not an article, this is a category with articles. So if I do creating your site, then it should blink, and it doesn't. So something is wrong. Um, I did publish it, didn't I? Yes. Uh, it should go to test, green blink. Um, let's just test if it's still working. So I would do green blink, publish, no, I would just reset it, I switch it off and on again. <laughs> okay, green blink, oh wait, it should first uh, register to the broker. And now Green Blink works. So if I go back to my website, I go to um, contact, nothing happens. But if I go to Nachricht, nothing happens. But oh, it does. Oh, okay. And Erstellensie uh, website, it blinks. Uh -huh. So uh, I would like to have a lot of, and it should be on all the time. <laughs> yes. So, um, well, this is how you can uh, do stuff with Internet of Things, with Joomla, and with small devices, with your hobby uh, things. And I wrote two plugins uh, that use the PHP MQTT library. I have both plugins available on GitHub. Um, it's called uh, PECF. Arc. I will show you. So if you want to do it yourself, <coughs> oh, I have to connect to the Wi-Fi, of course. I will have, have a link in my um, uh, presentation as well to this uh, library. So uh, I'm PE7ER on GitHub. And this is DB8IoT. And for me, it's the first project 
on GitHub that has two different colors. I didn't, I didn't know this, but if you look at it, there's Arduino code and there's PHP in it, because I also have some code for the uh, Arduino here. So for me, it was fun to do as well. Uh, are there any questions? Funny, but it's, it's. I don't spend my time directly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Um, it's really interesting. But do you already have like a use case you could use it for like real Truma stuff that's more useful than. I don't know. Do you have any ideas? Um, well, I had this idea of uh, um, a presence indicator for a co-working place, but it's not using this device, it's using Arduino and REST. But you can use it, of course, as well with MQTT, but I, I didn't go in, into that. Um, because when you use MQTT, all the people working at this co-work place can just install an MQTT client, and they don't have to have a tailor-made application. Just, so you just install MQTT, uh, we authorize all the people to the MQTT broker. So uh, when they are in the place, the Raspberry Pi will just pick their addresses and it might communicate it using MQTT. So uh, there's not a real use case. It was more like a sort of, I hope to inspire you to come up with ideas, to do some of this stuff yourself. So. Uh, I mean, the real thing that's already out there is like, Turning on lights when you're abroad and yes. stuff like this. I know. And so they, all use, they all use propriety stuff. Yeah. Uh, or they use click on, click off. It has three channels and no protection. So if yes. your neighbor has the same, they click on, click off your lights. Yes. Okay. Thank you for your attention.